Welcome to the Events Editor Tutorial Part 3. So we uh, choose our module, load it and we add a new adventure. We can name it and we're going to call it Treasure Inf or Invitation. And we're actually going to create another event straight away and I'll tell you why later on. And we are going to call that one Treasure Spawn. So we're going to just uh, save what we just did. And now we can start building. So this one is going to be a generic event. So generic events, as you remember, are global events that are drawn uh, randomly every single turn. So they, they can become annoying, so it's important to try and control the frequency of these events. One way is to make sure they only appear once. Another way is to assign it a chance value. So I'd say between 3 and 5% is, is large enough. So that makes sure that this event doesn't get drawn every single turn. But for this event, we actually want it to be a unique event. We only want it to appear once um, in each playthrough. So in order to do that, we will need to set a prerequisite using the player tag. So we select the player tag and we're going to have a look at these tags. Uh, shift left click on the drop down menu. And if we uncheck all the others, we're left with the player tags. Now, the ones you want to use for this type of thing is the quest tags, but only use tag quest test 1 till 20. So I've selected tag quest 6, uh, test 6, sorry, here. And I'm going to select does not have. So this event can only occur if you do not have tag quest test 6. And in the event modification, I'm going to modify player and I'm going to add this tag quest test 6. So what I've done there is, as soon as this event pops up, you are assigned immediately assigned this test tag. And then the next time this event is drawn by the computer, it's going to check whether you have that tag. If you do have it, it's not going to occur. So now it's going to be a unique event. So the stranger is saying that he's got a treasure map and we're just going to say all right. So now we are going to have um, a new place shown on our map. There aren't any prerequisites for that. So we're going to spawn a place. So we choose place and then in a drop down menu we can choose what type of place it is. So for this we're going to choose some ruins and we're going to set the radius so how far it is uh, from our group or the village in this case. And I'm going to now attach the treasure spawn event. This is why I've already created it previously so I can have it on the menu. So now the treasure spawn event is attached to the place that is spawned on the map. So save our progress and now create the treasure spawn. Now spawn events do not have anything ticked in the start adventure window. So we only choose a picture, we do not choose any type because it can only occur when it's attached to the particular spawn, so a group or a place on the map. So we come across a ruined city that we were previously told about. When we enter into that location, this is when this event uh, will appear. So we're going to search the ruins and to make it a bit more interesting, we're going to set a challenge to search the ruins. So the challenge is going to be an uh, intellect challenge because uh, you're basically looking, using your brains to find something. Now remember, intellect challenges are called intuition in our database. So we're going to have a prerequisite here for a scout or someone with perception. So we're choosing uh, perception and character tags because remember we want to be looking for people, not objects. So tag character 1 and tag perception of 4. That's our basic scout. 
So we want there to be at least one scout in the group and it will actually just make the challenge easier. So it will be a one skull challenge. So on the left drop down there menu I've chosen one skull. So if you don't have the scout the challenge will basically be more difficult. Now I've set up the values on the right to make sure only one of these answers appears and I set the challenge scale to 200 and set two skulls for the difficulty level. So uh, so this only changes the level of difficulty so I can actually have the same results for both challenges because they do the same thing. But I'm going to do the lose first and the reason why I've connected it to spawn on map is with spawn events you need to destroy the event owner after you've finished with whatever you're doing in the event unless you want the location to remain on the map forever. So you could have left this city here until someone finds the treasure then you would need to do the destroy event owner but if you want it to disappear that's really really important. So for the win condition I'm going to put some text here because I actually want there to be two different types of treasures found. So, doing an adventure phase first, adding an extra output, and once again, because it is a spawn event, I need to destroy the event owner, and only then can I reward the experience points and actually finish off the adventure. So we can now assign the experience points, the research points, and we're going to create another spawn on map. Again, destroy the event owner for that. And now we're going to enter the logic editor for the top one. And we're going to give it a 50% chance. So there's a 50-50 chance which treasure you're going to get, basically, that's all it is. So here we're going to get some uh, gold. And we're going to get um, some other stuff. Um, again, you're going to just have to look at our database or just work from your memory what sort of stuff you want to Give. Here I've chosen advanced minerals, so it just draws from all the advanced minerals we have in game randomly. And again in the second options you can just choose a different type of reward just to make it a bit more unpredictable. So this way you now have two different rewards, you've destroyed the event owner, so at least this, these runes won't remain there. You set the value to make sure only one of these answers appears. Otherwise it will look a bit silly if you have the same text twice. Um, and this is basically your spawn event done. Obviously you can make it more and more complex as you go along but these are the basic tools. Alright, thanks.